Welcome to the Dory video on Twine 2.6. In this video, we're going to look at an example of using CSS as part of form validation. We have now seen how the web language Cascading Style Sheets CSS is a powerful tool for changing the presentation of HTML elements. We saw in a previous video how we can use the color rule to create a style to apply to different HTML elements and change the presentation of text. We looked at red text and green text. To apply this knowledge in an extended example, let's return to that existing knowledge. So we want to work with the Story Style Sheet window within Twine. We're going to add some styles that have selectors and rules. Then we're going to apply those rules as part of an example using the knowledge of multiple macros we've already seen in previous videos. To begin, let's work with the Story Style Sheet window. Story Style Sheet. And those I've defined two different styles. Again, styles are combinations of selectors and a collection of rules. So I have two different selectors here, each looking for the class attribute. And again, as a review, two common attributes we find within elements are ID, identification, and class, classification. An ID should be unique for one particular element within a larger page or passage or whatever we're doing. Class classification, on the other hand, can apply to multiple elements. And in fact, that's what I'm using right here. So the period for class and its selector form. And this is ready, the color green, this is not ready, and the color red. Now, what I'm going to use these for is to display the color of text. However, I'm going to apply this in kind of an interesting way. In that, I'm going to use the replacer macro to replace the content of another element with text that has that particular color. So before I do that, let's step back a second and talk about what this example does. So I introduced it by using the title form validation. Often when you're working with web pages, you might have a user in a web page sense enter some type of data. When we look at interactive stories that are based on HTML, we're doing the same operation. So often we will have readers and input certain data like a name or a value or a password in some previous examples we've seen or potentially their age or any number of other things. But we usually want to keep this data within a certain range. We want a certain number of points assigned to a statistic like strength or we want names to be under 64 characters or any other rules we might have for the data we're getting from readers. That operation of checking to see if something is in a different is, is within a certain range is known as validation. So what we're doing in this example is we're having the reader input various things, and then I prepared various rules using various usages of the if macro to check against those. Is this applying to this rule? If so, then this input is considered valid or not. So let's look at this passage to kind of understand what I'm doing here. So I just have a single passage, but it is somewhat complicated. But let's begin, though, by looking at these first two lines. Asking the reader to enter their name and asking the reader to enter their age. Using the text box macro and number box macro right here. The variable I want to use within quotation marks and the value after it. So text box will be in a name, number box will be within age. Immediately after that, I'm using a div or a division element. And notice it doesn't have any content. And the reason why I've set this up this way is because initially it will be invisible. It has no content and it won't sort of appear to readers. Notice this is an ID of name status and this is an ID of age status. Again, ID identification should be unique for the corresponding elements. And then notice I'm doing something a little bit different. I have another division called an ID of confirmation that covers all of this code all the way down, down here to the very bottom. And the reason I'm doing that is because once everything's been confirmed, and we'll talk through how this code works within this link macro, we're going to replace that entire contents with something else. To snort, we'll have a reader enter, again, a name and an age. And then they're going to click on a link called confirm information. Based on what they've entered for the name and the age, we'll do different things. So first, we're going to go ahead and use a temporary variable called status. Now, throughout many videos, I've been using story variables because we want to create a value in one passage and generally use it in another. In certain cases, we want to just create a value we're going to act on or use within a single passage, and for that, we want to use temporary variables. They're not as useful in larger spanning stories and values we want to track across multiple things. 
They can be incredibly powerful in situations like this where we want to save the value and then use it within a single passage. So right underneath this right here, I have set a temporary variable status to true. Now, something I want to note before I go any further is I am using the fact that the link macro works silently, that is, ignores all output, by spacing everything out. In other cases, I might have been very careful to arrange this and use a line continuation or the silently macro or the no BR, no break rule macro as well. But link macro runs silently, and so I can put as much space as I want inside, space things out, and make it much easier to read. So returning to this, we're setting the temporary variable status to true. Now I'm going to jump down a little bit to down here. If after all of this other code, which I'm going to talk through, it is still true, then we're going to replace confirmation, the ID confirmation, which is this division right here, with information confirmed using class ready. Again, use of class applying to multiple elements, and use of ID applying to one particular element. So if everything is true at the very end of all of this, we're going to replace this whole section here and we'll get rid of the link in the process. Let's walk through each of these different rules. One, if name is nothing, that is, if it's still the default value, we want to say please enter a name and we'll use in class not ready. So this will be in red and this will appear after the name as part of name status. Two, if name is not this, which means they entered anything, then it is ready, and we'll say valid name, and this will appear in green. Next rule, if they entered zero, which is the default value, or a negative number, which we don't want to accept as an age, let's please enter an age over zero, and we set status to false. Then if they entered age over 100, please enter an age under 100, so less than 100, and set status to false. If age is greater than zero and age is less than 100, so age is within the range of more than zero but less than 100, we set valid age right here and replace age status. So in each case, if it's wrong, we are immediately setting status to false, which means this will never run at the bottom. But if it's correct, we're not doing anything. So this is false, this is fine, this is false, this is false, and this is fine. The reason I've set this up is because, keep in mind at the beginning here, it's set to true. So if none of these other things trigger, which is to say at no point it's invalid input, then we will end up down here and this will be correct. Let's look at this in practice to really see how this works. So pretty standard form that we might see on web pages. In an interactive story, we might have a reader enter their name and again their age. but Let's say a reader doesn't enter anything, which is always a possibility we have to consider. And remember, as we talked about interactivity, when we work with the text box and the number box macros, we set those default values. So there might be cases where a reader doesn't enter anything. Maybe they didn't notice, or they weren't paying attention, or maybe they just don't want to enter anything. So we always have to consider the fact that we want to have those default values. Assuming the reader enters nothing, Notice it says, please enter a name, please enter an age over zero. Notice this is appearing in red text using the not ready selector as, a, as applied to the class attribute of the corresponding element. And this is appearing right here. So let's enter anything. So the letter D. This is a valid name. Again, as long as it's not just empty, it's completely valid. Now we need an age. So let's say oh, I'm going to enter negative one. Well, that's invalid. And let's say, though, I enter 100. Uh, enter an age under 100. OK, let's enter 10. So we've got a valid name D and a valid age of 10. Notice valid, valid, and then information confirmed. We replaced the whole thing and removed the ability to click the link a second time after everything is valid. So an example here of combining our knowledge of HTML elements, working with the replace macro, as well as working with CSS. When it's cascading style sheets, CSS, it doesn't necessarily have to be very complicated. There are lots of rules to the web language CSS, and we could use many of them if we wanted to, but we don't necessarily have to. As we saw in a previous video, we can use colors, green, red, and other things of the 140 named colors within CSS, to just change the presentation of text. And this can be incredibly powerful, as we saw in this particular example. 
We don't, again, need to engage with lots of different rules within CSS. We can if we want, but we can use simple things like just changing the color of text to perform simple form validation like we have here to allow a reader to input things. We can then validate it or not, is this correct or not, and respond in different ways. Working with, again, our knowledge of HTML to better organize content and then respond in the same passage. Now, I want to mention that key phrase in the same passage because previous examples we saw many videos ago were that we could use an additional information to the link macro to refresh the entire passage. We can always do that if we want, but we don't necessarily have to. In this case, instead of doing that, we're working with HTML elements and the replace macro to work within the same passage instead of navigating back to the passage itself each time. As I've mentioned in previous videos, both approaches are perfectly valid. One allows us to refresh the entire passage, which we might do, want to do in some cases. In this particular case, and again, working with HTML elements and the replace macro, we can instead update information in the same passage without navigating away from it, which in some cases might be the preferred way of approaching this. So this has been an example of doing form validation, working with all of our knowledge across HTML elements, working with CSS now, and engaging with all of it to create a simple form validation to show information to a reader based on the information they input using a text box and a number box. Again, working with lots of different macros, lots of different concepts, all within the same passage. Thanks for watching.